Back in 1988, somewhere in the province of Quebec in Canada, there was an unusual pink-purple globe detected flying above the St. Lawrence River. An object whose nature and whose origins were unknown for many, many years. Technically, still unknown today. And although initially it was obviously assumed to be some kind of a UFO or potentially some other mysterious and hard to explain phenomenon, eventually it was followed by something else. It was followed by an earthquake. And this is where our story begins. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today I wanted to talk about this really interesting concept that's technically becoming an actual scientific concept simply because of the amount of evidence that seems to suggest it actually exists. And no, we're not talking about UFOs. Mostly because I still think it's nothing to do with science. We're talking about something way more interesting in my opinion. We're talking about earthquake lights. These strange phenomena that seem to appear during very powerful earthquakes and that in theory could actually explain various UFO phenomena as well. And one of the main reasons why it was very difficult to believe the phenomenon existed was actually because of the poor quality of various pictures. For example, here's a picture from Romania from the 70s. This is a courtesy of Seismological Society of America. What exactly is this showing us? It's showing us something, but it's hard to actually distinguish anything here. On the other hand, this picture by Jim Conacher taken in Alaska in the 70s shows us something with slightly more detail, unusual yellow lights above a lake. But in this case, it's still kind of difficult to explain what exactly we're looking at, or even if this is a real phenomenon. But both of these phenomena were followed by a relatively powerful earthquake. But the reports of these lights appearing after earthquakes actually have a very long history of being reported in a lot of different literature. As a matter of fact, the first ever mentioning of an earthquake light was back in 869 in regards to a relatively powerful earthquake in Japan. But more and more reports start to come out in the 20th century and way more in the 21st, especially with the advent of CCTV and various smartphones that do have much more powerful cameras. And in every single case, it would involve some kind of a relatively powerful earthquake, at least 5.5 on Richter scale. And the interesting thing is that usually these lights were classified as either one of the two. Either unusual global formations usually flying above the area where the earthquake would occur eventually, this is something that happened back in 1975 in Hawaii, or the lights generally resembling a typical aurora, but usually white or blue in color with the lights themselves appearing and disappearing in just a few seconds, occasionally lasting for a minute or so. And so, for example, in 1930s, once again in Japan, there were lights that were visible from a distance of about 110 kilometers. But more recently, the devastating 2008 Sichuan earthquake produced lights that were visible from approximately 400 kilometers away. None of this was recorded on camera, or at least not reported by media, but it was reported by several witnesses. Similar phenomena were seen in 2003 earthquake in Mexico, in 2007 earthquake in Peru, 2009 earthquake in Italy, 2010 earthquake in Chile, and even the powerful eruption of Sakurajima volcano also resulted in the production of these lights. Or at least that's what was claimed by the eyewitness accounts. And up until about 10 years ago, most of the scientific community was still relatively skeptical about the existence of this phenomenon, simply because it seemed a little bit unrealistic. How exactly would the light be produced because of the earthquake? Yet more and more reports started to come out, and with the advent of social media, and more importantly, smartphones, we started to get actual evidence, video evidence. Now at first it was just photos, once again showing us unusual lights, for example, this is from 2009 in Italy, with certain pictures and videos not really showing much, and certain other pictures looking a little bit too unreal, even though these were actual photos. But then we started to get actual footage from actual witnesses, using smartphones. And this is absolutely incredible. This shows you what these earthquake lights were like during an earthquake in 2021 in Acapulco, Mexico with these phenomena being captured from a lot of different angles by a lot of different people. And some of them just being completely unreal. It literally looks like the entire sky is exploding with these lights. Now what exactly is happening here? And more importantly, is this an actual real scientific phenomenon? And of course not everyone believed what they were seeing. Well, some of the explanations for these lights do make sense. These were maybe exploding transformers. As a matter of fact, at least one video from Acapulco that you see right here, and as always you can find in the description below, shows us what happened right there. This transformer exploded, producing the lights above. 
But this single explosion doesn't actually produce enough light to illuminate the skies just as we see behind it. So something else, more powerful, was causing a lot of these other flashes. For example, in this case right here, the actual light seems to be coming from above the skies, not really from below where the transformers would be located. Similarly, in this video right here, it becomes obvious that some of the lights also seem to be different color, so they do seem to have slightly different origin. And so following this earthquake last year in 2021, that's sort of when a lot of scientists suddenly realized that maybe this is something after all. And specifically because even very recently, both in China and in Japan, we had even more evidence for the existence of these unusual earthquake lights. These lights you're about to see, that's from the very recent earthquake in the same region of Sendai in Japan. With this video being taken on March 16, 2022. And as you can see from the power of this flash, it's unlikely to be a transformer. Something way more powerful would have to produce the light we're observing. But that's where we enter the realm of unknown. At the moment, it's really unclear what produces this. But from all of the available evidence so far, some of the scientists established that it seems to be possibly two different phenomena. One of them resembling a typical aurora usually happens either during or slightly after a very powerful earthquake, at least five on the Richter scale. But then there is also something that seems to happen before the earthquakes, sometimes even a few weeks before the earthquake occurs. And this is something that's observed very close to the epicenter. And sometimes this resembles a ball of light, sometimes it resembles something slightly different, but it seems to resemble a typical object we would classify as a ball lightning, or sometimes resembles a ball of light that hovers and disappears slightly after. So yeah, it sure sounds like a typical UFO. But a lot of these events seem to be pretty much natural. But aliens, they're not. Because there are actual scientific explanations for what could be possibly happening here. It's just not entirely clear which explanation is the best. For example, in one of the explanations, it involves a chemical reaction. In this case, through the breaking of different bonds inside certain minerals, for example dolomite or rhyolite, it's possible to produce very high stress that can then release oxygen that actually becomes ionized. And once these ions escape from the cracks in the rocks, they can then start ionizing the atmosphere, forming plasma that emits light. Actually, the plasma ball you see right here is produced in this way. With certain experiments in the lab, suggesting that this could actually explain some of these phenomena. So, for example, by having certain locations with relatively vertical folds or cracks, this, in theory, can produce a lot of ionized oxygen, thus producing a lot of light. But that's, of course, just one of the explanations. The other explanation involves the principle known as piezoelectricity, the same principle usually used in a typical quartz clock. And here, through the mechanical motion on the quartz crystals and through sheer power of the earthquake, this can actually produce a lot of electricity, which once again could maybe produce some sort of ionization in the air. Another explanation involves the magnetic field of our planet, and specifically the interaction between these very highly electrically charged rocks and the magnetic field above the region, with these regions then triggering some kind of an aurora-like event. And the last explanation involves a phenomenon that we know exists, but also do not understand. This is known as the tribal luminescence. It's the unusual production of light when certain minerals, in this case, once again crystal, are mechanically pulled apart, ripped, scratched, crushed or rubbed, and end up producing the light that you see right here. And so trying to use this phenomenon that we barely understand to explain another phenomenon that we really don't understand is not really good science. But nevertheless, it is one of the possible explanations for how some of these lights that have been observed in various regions on the planet seem to be produced. But even though we don't understand what's happening here very well, we do understand where these events seem to occur. The vast majority, or about 97% of all of these lights, for the most part have been associated with these so-called sub-vertical folds. The regions which only cause about 5% of all of the earthquakes on the planet and essentially represent the region where the tectonic plates are stretched and pulled apart, causing various vertical cracks. In contrast, the majority of earthquakes on the planet are usually caused by the subduction zones where one plate is slipping below the other. And so knowing where these earthquake lights happen could one day help us figure out what's happening here. But more importantly, or more practically, 
It's already been suggested that detecting these lights can actually help us predict future powerful earthquakes. With several studies from Italy, for example, already suggesting that it has been done in the past where people detecting lights and knowing about this phenomenon has actually provided shelter for several other people in their basement, which saved their life. In other words, by being able to somehow detect these lights across the planet, possibly using some kind of a satellite system, at least in theory, we could maybe predict earthquakes, powerful ones, or at least in certain regions of the planet where these lights do appear. Which of course makes this a pretty interesting topic that we're going to be exploring again once more studies come out. But I guess until more discoveries, more evidence, or more explanations, we're going to have to leave it at that. It's still a pretty big mystery. It's still unknown whether this is a legit phenomenon or simply some kind of a correlation with something entirely different. And it's still unknown whether all of this has some kind of a more boring, mundane explanation. And it's obviously still unknown what mechanism produces any of this. But I guess once we learn more or once the scientists understand this in more detail, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. So make sure to subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support the channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.